I say it was him. Oh, really? Or, um, Kirk Kowalski. Yeah, Kowalski, yeah. He was pretty good. Like, they're fucking nuts, so... <laughs> yeah. I'll be feeling that tomorrow, man. As you can see, Nathan's pretty fresh today. So, one of the biggest things that we're doing since finishing up our states and nationals prep is stepping up the volume and changing some of the angles. So we found, particularly on like squat Mondays, we would spend so much time warming up to top sets, wrapping, changing yeah. weights, walking out, doing the monolith. You'd come to 6.45 and you'd just finish squatting. Sometimes it'd be after seven. So you spend an hour and a half squatting, warming up. You know, yeah. two hours sometimes we get nothing done. Just so, when there's more than two of us. Oh man, yeah. So the 5 a.m. crew has turned into the 5 a.m. duo. Regardless of what people think, man, getting up to train at 5 a.m. means you're up at least 4.30, transit time, things like that. Nathan travels about 30 minutes yeah, I'm up at one way. 3.50, Yeah. 3.50 a.m. 3.50 a.m., man, to train at 5 a.m. This is a special kind of, this is a special kind of hard. And uh, like, well, and that's not to blow smoke up our ass or anything, but like we were saying to Nathan earlier, like we're at a very low level in terms of achievement and powerlifting and we do a lot to sacrifice just to get to this level. So if you think you want to be number one at anything, you're going to have to get up a ton earlier and sacrifice well, a, lot harder. a ton more. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think, I think something else too, I, I don't think that, I think the word sacrifice sometimes I feel like it's really overused. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel like I sacrifice anything to get up to be here at 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, because I thoroughly enjoy it and I love it and I, and I don't feel like I'm actually paying a price. Yeah. I feel like I'm sort of investing in, yeah. in my future and health and, and, and everything. So, um, but I can appreciate, I think I can also really appreciate what it takes to be people like those top bodybuilders and top powerlifters and that sorts of things. Like, top sports um, top, top sports, yes, and women, men and women, the athletes. Yeah. So, um, but I think... I think we need to stop using the word sacrifice because I, don't, I feel like it's not a sacrifice if you're enjoying it. I mean, if you're not enjoying it. Well, sacrifice is not synonymous right. with negativity either. Okay. Like yeah. sacrifice, all that means is you've given up something, something. to have something else. Okay. To yeah. Get up at you know to, to get up and train at five a.m. means you've sacrificed sleep, and if you haven't sacrificed yeah. sleep, you've had to sacrifice something. Okay. The night before in order to get to sleep on time. Might be time with your family. Might be watching the season of something deck stuff you know like whatever you're into yeah, yeah. you're having to miss out on something because we all have the same amount of time during the day yeah. we all have 24 hours yeah. so when you get that the reason or the excuse of there's just not enough time you have the same 24 hours slotted into your day as anyone else you yeah. choose how to spend them yeah. it's up to you so uh going forward man the delayed onset muscle soreness or doms uh, is the acronym have just been through the roof? <laughs> it's been a long time, man, since I've walked into a Monday feeling pretty ginger from Friday. Friday was pretty good. Yeah, my pecs are still sore from Saturday a little bit, which is a good thing. But you know, again, they could be excuses if you use them to skip out. But because we're still doing the work, they're just reasons as to why you're sore. It's only when you use them to scapegoat yourself from work that they can become an excuse. But it's also good to to measure what's going on within your body. Yeah. Um, so today, yeah, quick recap, we did squats and then we did uh, like safety bar front squats, we did walking lunges, yep. we did... Uh, That's a great combo too, <coughs> by the way. Yeah, so we did the, the lat pull down with a focus on the lower lat. The thing about the lat, obviously it attaches up here in the shoulder and in, in a couple of spots actually, and then originates down here on the hip bone somewhere. Um, you know, get out a diagram if you want to find it exactly. But in order to create stability through the torso, a lot of people think it's all, you know, core. And when we say core, we usually think abdominals. Core is the transverse plane, so it's front, back, side, side. So that includes the lats, includes the lower back, includes the obliques. And uh, one of the things that the physiotherapist masseuse that I've been working with says I need to sort of work on lower lat. Something that Henry said to me last prep when I missed top set on the squat, he's like, well, how much core are you doing? You know, how much how much ab work are you doing? Because of the way that I folded in the squat. Uh -huh. And the thing is, at the time, man, I was doing a bridge with like an extra 105 yeah. kilos on yeah. my back. Yeah. You know, so it really wasn't abdominal work and it really was no oblique or low back because we're doing a ton of that stuff. Uh -huh. So when the masseuse said, hey, your lower lat is underdeveloped comparatively to your mid upper, I was like, yep, that must be the, the weak point. spot. You know, I'm not able to bear down in the squat and take weight on my back. Yeah. So my legs are stronger than I'm giving them credit for. So it's just a matter of, if you can bring up the weak link, 
you know, if, if your maximum squat is say 200 kilos and the weakest link in your chain can support 200 kilos but everything else can support 220, work on that one weak link and your squat will go up to 220. Yeah, yeah. You know, almost like that. You've just got to find out what the weak spot is, what it's capable of, work on that, and then you'll see a massive jump. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, the stuff, the core midsection work we've done so far has been really good. I mean, I felt, I felt Fridays, mm. I'm still feeling Fridays, yeah. like everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that, 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 that was awesome, that yeah. was really good. I enjoyed those um, the reverse front squat too. Yeah. That was really good, I found that that forced me to stay switched on completely. And I know in that last set that I did, when everything was getting fatigued and tired, I really started to cave and I yeah. made it extremely difficult. So. Yeah, that was good. And then, you know, there's other ways to improve intensity of the workout rather than just sets, reps, and weight. You know, you can improve the intensity by increasing range of motion, increasing time under tension. And so it's not always just to put more weight on the bar, do more reps, add another set. Because you, like we spoke about, I think it was on Friday, you know, you've got to have like a recoverable volume. Yeah. You yeah. know, because if you're overreaching too far every session, Come fourth week, fifth week into a training block, you begin getting weaker rather than stronger, and that would be the opposite of what we're after. So, again, guys, any questions? Fire through to Nate. He's yep. your man. People's champion. <laughs> and um, yeah, again, yeah. Thank, thanks, guys.